I mentioned in my last video that to try and protect the potatoes a bit, I was going to put them in the bottom greenhouse. I'll put them in there, they're still in the way a bit and uh, still had overnight frost, I think it was down to minus one last night. And the soil is still on the top, definitely a bit crunchy. So what I've decided to do now while I can is to empty all the buckets out, get all the potatoes and put them in a paper bag, paper sack and store them in my greenhouse where that won't be going below freezing. The soil's just about workable at the moment. It's uh, any longer and I think it'd have been two hours to get the potatoes out. As you can see, we've got a quite a few in here. These are say the charlottes and we've got seven or eight buckets of these. So hopefully they'll all be like this. And then one less thing to worry about, one less to worry about. So that's uh, seven buckets of the Charlotte's emptied, and I must say, overwhelmed with the crop. As you can see in here, and that one's full right to the top. Just as a comparison, this is a standard mushroom tray, which you all know, and that's the size. I'll give these a wash, leave them to dry in the greenhouse in the garden and then I bag them up. So I'm really happy with these considering these have been in the ground almost nine months and spotlessly clean, no mark on them at all. I'll let my leaf potatoes after I give them a swill. They don't look too bad. I'm going to put these say in the greenhouse and let them dry for a day or two and then I'll bag them up. Tomorrow's the last of our council garden waste collections so I'm making the use of it and trying to get as much of the hardwood removed off the site as possible and the final job I've got to do for doing that is actually chopping down these autumn fruit and raspberries. These will eventually get potted up and will not potted up planted into the Vajiga metal bed when I get round to putting it in place here. Well that's them all chopped down ready. This thing here is another grapevine and the plan is, whenever, probably early next year now, when I put the Vajiga bed in here, I'm going to say I'm going to wire the bottom, stop the mould coming through. I'm going to plant all the autumn raspberries, but in the end I'm going to put a framework up using these metal poles, and I'm going to put a grapevine up, and I'll run it along the top, and hopefully we'll get a nice crop off that. Here in the allotment greenhouse, as you can see, all the foliage has been chopped down now, and that's in the council bin ready to go. I haven't cleared the pots out because most of these, well in fact all of them, have got the clay pebbles in. So I don't just want to tip them out. I do them in a defined way where I can actually save most of the pebbles, give them a wash and them are good for another year. So that's a job to do when it's a rainy day or not so warm and then come here, shut the door, at least you're away from the elements. I'm going to have a little bit of a change around next year. Rather than doing the two quad grows right against the back with the cucumbers in, I'm going to turn them 90 degrees, so I'll get a full length of it, of four tomatoes in the autumn pots, then two quad grows with the cucumbers in, and have the same both sides. And in the gap, what that's created in the middle, I'm going to be building another wicking system, same as the one as I've got in the greenhouse in the garden, and I'm going to be using that for possibly growing some aubergines. In the meantime, looking at the borders, sign that weather's dropped cold, we've got rat owls in here, and them active already. I've seen some this morning, but there ain't a lot you can do. But I'm only going to be using this as a storage area anyway. I've still got some canes to fetch in from the runner beans and things like that. Anything that I need to get out of the elements will be coming in here. Right. On the 10 years that I've been on this allotment, as each year progresses, there's less and less crops that I can grow without putting protection on. So this time of year, it is important that you do protect your coverings because they're not cheap. This bed here is where I've grown my alums in this year and this is me ultra fine insect mesh. This bed in total is about six meters by almost three meters and a meter high. So at the moment I've got leeks under here. They've been covered because the the leek moth which comes twice a year and that's finished then September-ish, October. So there's going to be none around now. So to save keeping this out all winter and any bad weather we're going to have, I'm actually going to remove it. As I said, the leaks are under here and I'll be featuring them in a little clip later on. 
Another advantage of tidying away coverings and nets this time of year is the potential damage that you can have caused by snowfall. In the past, where I've had a, a decent Avonoy snowfall, the weight of it has actually sunk the net and the cross members I've got here are gutters, plastic gutters, and it's actually pressed them down and kinked them in the middle. So that's another reason I want to get this out. Oh, I'm going to tidy this up and straighten it, fold it up as neat as I can, ready to put away. Well, that's the best I can do at the moment. It does help if there's a couple of you to uh, manipulate these things. I get quite a few questions asked about the coverings and nets and meshes that I use. So what I plan on doing early in the new year is do a little video explaining everything where I got them from, what size they are and that. And that will hopefully help one or two years out for the up and coming season. I've still got quite a few carrots in the tanks. And uh, last year, the, the frow was in the soil, so I couldn't get them out. I saw on a video a couple of weeks ago, Steve from Seaside Allotments. He'd actually chopped his carrots down to about an inch stalk on them. And then he just covers them. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I've got to uh, say there must be about that much depth from the top of the tank. So I'm going to chop them off. And I've got a bit of polycarb over there, spare. I should be able to cut a couple of lids just to fit on the top. And it'll keep any excess rain out as well. That's the carrot tanks cut down. I'm surprised to see we've used half of the tank already there. Didn't think we'd add that many, but not to worry. Um, I'm hoping these are going to last me till about February, March. I think I'm going to have to top them up with a bit more compost because there's one or two shoulders showing there. And uh, if you don't watch it, they go green on the top. But once I've done that, I've got the polycarb there. And I'll be marking that up and cutting that down. Well, it seems I got them covers on just in time. <laughs> we had a bit of a humdinger of a frost last night. I'd say around about minus three. And as you can see on here, the quite thick on here. Fortunately, there's an airflow underneath there. It's not completely sealed, so the moisture can in and out. But I've had a feel underneath, and the soil's still friable. It's not even frozen at all. So that's really doing the job. And hopefully that'll keep the carrots good for the next two or three months. That's about it for this one. I'd like to thank you very much for watching, subscribing and commenting. And I hope to see you in the next one very soon. All the best. Bye for now.